everyone, my name's Calvin and welcome back to another watercolor tutorial for Procreate. So in today's video we're going to paint this kind of a pumpkin illustration here. And uh, this is just something I wanted to do, it's kind of the season for that and October and all that. And uh, you can paint this kind of illustration with a regular brush kit, but I, I painted probably like a hundred pumpkins and I realized I, could, I should probably create a custom brush kit. Uh, so in this video I'm going to use a brush kit that I want to give you guys for free. And uh, you can download that in the uh, description down below. So I've got this St. Petersburg texture uh, loaded into Procreate. I just really like the uh, way this one looks on the camera. And I've also got the sketch. And if I look in the layers panel, I, you can see I've placed the sketch as the top layer. And uh, you can also download this exact sketch if you want to. I've, I'll put a link uh, in the description. But just make sure that when you place it in, place it as the very top layer and also set it to multiply. Otherwise, it'll just cover up your artwork. Now down here, I'm gonna start painting on a blank layer underneath the paper texture. And you could use any color for one of these pumpkins. There's so many uh, varieties, but I'm gonna keep it traditional and paint a kind of orange one. Now for the brush, uh, here's the brush kit, the free one in the uh, description. And there's six brushes, and I'm gonna start with the pumpkin wash brush and using that kind of orange color. And at a pretty big size, I'm just gonna quickly uh, create an interesting wash texture for this pumpkin, but I'm not worried about the uh, going over the edges. Now after that first pass, uh, you don't have to, but I really like to go over it again, but in a lighter color, a much lighter orange, and I'm going to focus that on the top. Now the purpose of this is really just to create an interesting texture, because otherwise, uh, you know, the pumpkin can end up too smooth and doesn't really even look like watercolor. I want to add some kind of intentional mistakes here, and that's what this brush is really good for. Now at this point, I need to sort of bring out all the layers. Uh, I need to basically add some kind of shading on the lobes to bring them out. And I made another specialized brush just for that. So it's called the uh, Shadow Fade Brush. And it's a little bit hard to explain, so I'll do a demonstration before I use it to paint. But uh, it's important that you do this on a different layer. And I'm going to make sure it's above our sort of pumpkin wash. And for the color, it doesn't really matter that much, but I recommend choosing a sort of dark version of the same color we painted the pumpkin with. Now with that brush at a pretty large size, um, if I just do a brush stroke here over in the uh, white area, you can see basically it has a, a very hard, smooth edge, and then it fades away on one side. Now, it's important to, to know also that, you know, if I do a, a stroke that goes up, the fade is on that side. And if I do a stroke going down, the fade is on the opposite side. Uh, so what I need to do over here on this pumpkin is I'm going to start in the bottom because I want the fade to be on that side. So I'm just going to start very lightly and press harder and harder and just keep that hard edge on the uh, sketch line there. And obviously, um, I can't do it on the same side. I need to come down from the top because I want the fade on the other side. So for the rest of these um, sort of lobe shades here, I'm just gonna start on the top and press very, very lightly, harder and harder, and then taper it off at the end. So that's it for the shading. And again, I did this on a different layer and you don't have to, but I think you should change it to multiply and then just sort of set the opacity to a point where you're kind of happy with the uh, level of contrast in the shading. I think that looks pretty good. And I'll go ahead and merge the uh, shading and the pumpkin background wash onto one layer. Next, I need to cut this out because I have all this extra watercolor that I don't need. Uh, and you could just erase it away using the eraser brush, but I think it's faster just to use the selection tool, set it to freehand, and just sort of trace out the sort of outside boundary of the uh, pumpkin here. Now, once you've made that selection, uh, you can do this uh, copy and paste down here, and it will just cut that out and paste it on a different layer. So we still have the original one down below, but if I turn it off, we're just left with the uh, pumpkin here. Now, if, if I zoom in here, you can see, I mean, the selection tool isn't perfect, and sometimes it's a little bit hard to use, and you can make mistakes like this. So don't be afraid to go in there with the eraser brush and just kind of edit it and sort of fix any mistakes you might have made uh, using the selection tool. So there we go, this looks pretty good, and I think I can move on to the uh, stem. So I'm gonna do that on a separate layer, and I made a special brush just for making the stem basically in one stroke, and it's called this pumpkin stem liner brush. And for the color, I recommend a kind of medium light warmish gray color, I think something like that. But since it's on a different layer, it doesn't matter if you get the color or the shade wrong because we can adjust that later on. So using the uh, pumpkin stem liner brush at a pretty large size, I'm gonna start on this uh, kind of curly Q stem uh, by pressing very, very, very lightly. And then as I go down and down, I'm pressing harder and harder. And at the very end, I'm just gonna do the maximum 
uh, pressure just to create the final kind of uh, flare at the end. And it's important to put this behind the pumpkin because otherwise, um, it, you know, it's going over the top of it, which isn't right. And this looks good as it is, but I think it's a might be a good idea to add some shading to this. So if I zoom in here and the stem is selected, uh, I can add shading using the selection tool. And uh, I'm going to grab the selection tool and set it to freehand. And I'll sort of outline the first shadow down here, just like that. And I'll go to hue, saturation, and brightness for the layer. And then I can just sort of selectively darken that portion of the stem. And your stem might be different, but if you have a kind of a curly Q stem like this, I recommend adding a shadow in there just to give it a little bit of dimension. So for that, I'm going to use this, the uh, same technique. I'll make a selection like this. I'll add another one over here. Then I'll go to hue, saturation, and brightness. And when I darken it, it'll sort of help, help your eye find out what's in front and what's in back. And this one is almost done. Uh, let me turn off the sketch so we can get a better look at this. And uh, I think I want to add some kind of splatters to this. So I've also included a uh, paint flicks brush. So next we're going to use that one. But also make sure you do that on a separate layer, sort of above everything. And you could use any color, but I recommend a sort of dark color. And I'm just going to do a few passes at a pretty large size just to add some random sort of paint splatters. And then you can change that layer transparency mode to multiply. It'll just look a little bit le uh, better because it'll sort of pick up on the color underneath it. And I'll lower the opacity just so I can barely see those. Now in a few areas, my splatters do go over the edge and you could just use the eraser brush and manually erase those. But if you have a lot of splatters, that can be a kind of too much work. So a quick trick is to use the selection tool and just sort of circle around any splatters you don't want anymore like this. Circle back, go to that layer. And if you tap it and click clear, uh, you can see it just cuts out everything that we had uh, selected. So this looks pretty good, but I think it will look cool if I add some sort of color variation to this. And uh, I think the easiest way to do that is with the selection tool. So I'll grab that and set it to freehand. And I'm going to make a random selection that just catches a few random areas of the pumpkin and I'll feather it out quite a bit. And next I can go to hue, saturation and brightness and just shift the hue and try to drop in a sort of secondary color. Now in this case, it looks a little bit oversaturated, so don't be afraid to raise the brightness and lower the saturation of that secondary color just to make it kind of fit a little bit better with your color scheme. And there we go, this one is all done. As you can see, uh, it prints out really nicely and uh, I'm really satisfied with this one. It's, it's a simple project and it only takes a minute or so, so you have this sort of instant kind of satisfaction when you paint something like this and it will really build your confidence. And that pretty much wraps it up. But as always, thank you so much for your support. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.